It is Rock 100.5. You are listening to Bailey and Southside as our um, pandemics continue. Uh, the eight categories, all voted on by you, the audience. Uh, the three nominees for each category, again, voted by you, the audience. The winners all voted, again, by you, the audience. And this is another big mama. This is mm. another big one because mm -hmm. this past year, and the whole reason we did the pandemics was because this week marks the one year anniversary of us being out of the studio because of uh, COVID. Um, so this past year, our lives have changed. We've learned things about people we never thought we'd learn. We've watched television shows we never thought we'd watch. So on and so forth. This category, most bingeable streaming show, so many options, most bingeable streaming show, and the nominees were The Mandalorian on Disney. That's a big one. That's, That's a strong one. There's a lot of uh, Star Wars nerds, so to speak, out there that love this show. Loved it. The new Unsolved Mysteries, which was a hit. And I told you the first episode featured uh, my buddy, who I didn't even know. I worked with him for years. His brother was murdered, and they still haven't gotten to the bottom yeah. of it. Uh, so uh, the new Unsolved Mysteries was the other nominee. And the third uh, nominee of course, is Tiger King. Everybody was Tiger King crazy during the pandemic. Yep, and now I've watched all three. So for me, it was a tough decision, but I knew which one I'd binged first. I knew which one was must-see TV. So this will be an interesting category. Without further ado, the unveiling, the winner of the oh most bingeable streaming show for the Rock 100.5 Bailey and Southside Pandemics, getting the hand-sewn Golden Mass, straight from the mines in Dahlonega. Oh. Tiger King is the winner and accepting the Golden Mask on behalf of Tiger King is John Finlay. John, John, good to have you back on, brother. Congratulations. How do you feel right now? This Golden Mask is yours. I, uh, you know, I never would have thought that Tiger King would have been so popular, uh, but Thank you, guys. I mean, it, <laughs> it's really an honor to win something like that. But John, 64 million people watch Tiger King. That's the one thing I binged. And the problem now is you don't really need a mask. Your teeth look great. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's get, with us getting back to normal. Um, I think that people are really going to start to recognize us and be able to approaches without uh, having to wear a mask now now yeah. we we learned in tiger king which was the savior i think for all of us during yeah. the beginning of this pandemic we didn't know what to do with ourselves and then this tiger king show comes out on netflix and we fall in love with all of the characters john of course the ex-husband of the tiger king himself wrapped up in this triangle love story um, throughout the now married to a woman, happily married to a woman. Yes. Uh, Steve pointed out your teeth are, you look amazing. We get to see you on zoom here, but you, you, I think, at least in my opinion, Steve, I think you might agree with me here. Okay. Out of all the characters in tiger King, you came out smelling like roses. You actually came out the most normal out of all of those. Do you get that feeling? Wait, what are we talking about? Normal here. Uh, the, uh, there's nothing normal about me. <laughs> well, you compare <laughs> yourself to a couple of the other dudes on that show, bro. You are like in the clergy because there are some interesting characters that came out uh, of Tiger King. You know, you took your life, which was what we all saw in Tiger King. And now from my under, uh, understanding of what I've just read about you, you, I mean, you've got a normal life. You're, you're a welder. You're, you're, you're active on social media. Your teeth are fixed. You got facial hair. You have a shirt on, which is very rare. We never saw you with a shirt on for Tiger King. That's what I, I mean by normal. If you want. What, well, no, no, you're you good. could. <laughs> it might be appropriate because I, I am uncomfortable with you in clothing. I'll tell you. Uh, no, the one oh. thing. No, it, look at it like this, John. And I think the point my partner's trying to make, Bailey's saying that you did come out on top. And I agree. I would say you went worst to first because when you're watching it, no offense, you're the worst. You're on meth. You're the uh, you're you're the lover of the of the crazy character. 
and and you're you're, you're just hooked on drugs and you're kind of just out of it and now you've turned it around you don't see yourself as a gay man. I think drugs made you do it. That's my personal opinion. Drugs and made him gay. <laughs> I think I think they did. You know what? It's Quote like of the, the week. <laughs> no, it's like the movie Less Than Zero. If you've ever seen it, if you haven't, watch it tonight. But Robert Downey Jr. is turned to do gay acts because he's on drugs. <laughs> John, did think, you did you go gay because of drugs? Did you? No. No, I didn't think so. Yeah. You still got a little gay in you, right? Everybody's if you're gay, everybody's got a splash got a gay in you, right? Everybody's got that hint. So, yeah. yeah. Do you uh? Does your does your now wife? Does she is she intrigued by the show? Does she ask for the things that maybe we didn't get to see, just to know everything that there is to know about John Finley? No, she knows everything. I disclosed everything to her before we even started dating, yeah. and. You know, she accepts me for who I am, not for who I was. Do you consider yourself a totally different person now? Oh, I'm completely different. Yeah. I mean, I, the way I do things now compared to then is like day and night. It's uh, a whole new world. I mean, I get to live a positive life and interact with people that I never would have in a million years probably well you still have a fascination it looks like with animals because you know you're around all the tigers and you know you probably saw some horrible things that come with that like you know breeding them selling them you know all the crazy things that have come out about the show whether they're true or not us the audience only have our opinions but now you're into gators and crocs is there just something in you that has a fascination for animals and and not normal animals wild animals animals that could kill you do you is it do you get off on that is that your new drug uh knowing you could die or something bad could happen is that why you were into this in the first place no uh no uh i've always had a love for animals it's just it's kind of changed because of um the things that we've done seen all that but i'm always going to have a love for animals whether it's dogs or uh deer or fish or alligator crocodiles exotics doesn't matter what it is i'm always going to have a love for it um i just kind of gotten away from that world because it really turned me off from it i just don't really have anything to do with it anymore well you when went you, from mammals to reptiles i know that when you look back on on the the series right the the tiger king on netflix what was your cringeworthy moment when you looked back, especially now that your life is is on track and you go, God almighty, man, not only did I do it, I did it on television. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? Do you have that moment? No. No. I mean, everything no. I did, I did because that was me back then. Yeah. And now it's, I'm not as crazy as I was then, but I still have a crazy wild hair every now and then. Yeah. You still hey, talk you, to, uh, or have you talked to Joe? That was my question. Do you still talk to the guy? Does he call you or anything? Nope. Yeah. When's the last time no you talked contact. to him? Huh? When's the last time? Um, you know, before all the court and stuff. Yeah. His buddy, uh, Eric, Lo was it Eric Love Nate? That's the guy we would have on that was trying to get Trump to, to get him out of jail. And uh, he was hell. I mean, that dude thought that he was really getting out of jail. Did you ever think that that dude was going to be able to get him out? Uh, you know, I never really kept up with all that. That was like when everything was hitting, uh, my worry was interviews and charities and stuff like that i wasn't even paying attention to all that stuff yeah. were you trying to disconnect yourself like just trying to you know step away do you think he deserves to be in jail i mean a 22 year sentence is pretty rough you know do you think he deserves that um and do you think there's other people that should be in jail that aren't well you know a jury of his peers found him guilty and what do you think i whatever they said is what really happened so i can't really have an opinion whether he is or whether he's not 
the jury found him guilty and that's what I'm going to go with. And I like that attitude. And I'm going to start using that. What, <laughs> Steve, if you do something and you oh, want me to just get back your play, I'm going to be like, dude, let's put you in front of jury of your peers and let's okay. see what they say. And then I'm going to agree with everything that they have to say. So, so it's not for you to decide. You're like, it's not it's, for me. I'm going to okay. bow out every single time. That's well what we'll done. do on the show. We're just going to have a jury of our peers <laughs> segment. Where we're just going right. to. Ask them, and that will be our opinion. Uh, there, there you is, go. There is a Tiger King too, right, John? Coming out. That I don't know. No, oh, you're not a part um, of the one-legged really? dude on the show. He was just interviewed not that long ago. He said that they're about to start filming. I think I saw that. You know anything what? about this? No, I know nothing about that. Bailey, oh. did the one-armed girl agree with the long one-legged guy that they were? Yes, he asked her to tie his shoes, and she declined. <laughs> Sorry, I know they're friends of yours, but uh, you know people lost limbs. What do you do? You, do? do you still talk to everybody? Uh, anybody else from the the show? No, you just as soon as it, as it was over, you're like, I got to straighten up my life, or I'm going to die, probably. Right? I work too much to really stay in contact with anybody. No. So since it's all over, you know, we look at the first episode date being March 20th and the last one, April 12th. So right at the beginning of the pandemic, right when we needed something, when everybody was to told to go home, we have this. And a lot of people didn't even have it when it came out. They had it months later. They heard about it through other people and continued to watch it. I'm sure somebody watched it last week for the first time. But with all that said, that's a lot of people that watched. Who got all the money? I know we talked to you, but since we've talked, did you – again, get any funds from this? Did, did you get any money? Because you were a part of it, a big part of it. No, not really anything. It, I mean, they, they did the filming and that was pretty much it. It wasn't, they weren't just like handing money out to everybody. It was, they were asking us to do filming and there was no mention of money really. Wow. Not a dime, no residuals, no nothing. Oh. So who got somebody got paid because when you do a show like this, you, you, you box it together and then you sell it. And then Netflix in this case would have purchased it. They pick it up for X amount of dollars. And then if it hits after the first season, then you really get paid in the second season. It's a stranger things kind of thing. Right? Mm -hmm. So there was money there. There's definitely going to be money in the second season. You got none of it. Zero Zippo. Yeah. Nothing. It was, Wow. It was pretty much the pro producer was asking us to do it, and that was it. Wow. That's Has it helped sucks. you with your Instagram at least? Have you gotten, you know, the fame of all this and interviews like you're doing with us right now on Bailey and Southside? You know, I did a lot of interviews and a lot of um, cameos. I did a lot of cameos. Oh, that's right. You're on that cameo. You know, Steve, the thing we talk about where they go and people can pay money. How much do you go for it? You're pretty cheap, actually, right? You were like 79 bucks that you could get you? Oh, cool. 85. 85. Okay, so I wasn't far. So what are some of the cameos that you're doing for people? What are you saying? Uh, you know, there was a lot of proposals. Um, I asked, there was one where I asked a, a sister to be a bridesmaid. There was a lot of Mother's Day. Uh, I think I did quite a few Father's Day. But there was a lot of, um, like, the first responder type stuff. Um, oh, that's nice. Doctors, nurses, and a lot and a lot of birthday wishes. I mean, there was a ton of You didn't do anything, like, for 21-year-olds that were turning legal saying – you know, you don't want my life. Don't do what I did. No, no. recovering meth heads. <laughs> this is John Finley from Tiger King. Don't do what I did and meet a don't. mullet dude like Joe. You know, that's just yeah. going to be a bad deal. Well, look, uh, congratulations. I'm glad we were able to get you back on. Yes. Really enjoyed having you on the first time. You're just really, you're just a nice guy. You're just a very nice, legit and you're just straight up good dude. I really, Honest. No honest. secrets. Yeah. No secrets. Um, the winner of the Bailey and Southside Pandemic Most Bingeable Streaming Show goes to Tiger King and accepting it is John Finley. You will be getting this in the mail soon, sir. Uh, last question for you. What are your plans 
for the golden mask? Do you plan to wear it or do you uh, plan to display it? Uh, you know, I probably plan on hanging it on my first ever deer. Nice. I'm not going to wear something like that. You, you know why? Mm. Because that's the first award I've gotten in a very long time. Mm. So you're gonna hang it on a deer. Oh, like the deer is already on the wall. Yeah, it's his first deer. Yeah. It's the deer oh, okay. head. I got you. All right. Yeah. I thought he was gonna do one of those pictures that I hate, where people kill the deer and then they yeah. jack the neck and there's blood everywhere, and then he's just gonna wipe the blood up with our with our mask. No. Like, oh, no, what a no, dick! No. Don't do that with a mask, dude. You gotta. No, no, no. Okay. Um, it was my first ever deer I've ever shot in the wild, and. It was the first time I ever really went hunting. So I did a lot of firsts last year. And did you drink the blood the, like in Red Dawn? No. Oh, I'm just I think that's buddy. just in the movies. Okay. I don't think you. I'm not really... a deer hunter. I'm asking. I, I Red Dawn, a great movie. They no, drink, you know, none of my no, friends. No, what you're really supposed drink. to do is yeah. bite the heart. I hide the heart. Yes. Yes. Oh, you didn't know that's, that. You never yes, I did. I knew that. Oh, no, Stop you it. bite the heart. No, no, no. You. That's making people gay and you're biting hearts. This interview is all a bunch of fibs and no, lies. No, Bailey, I'm sorry. You don't know what you don't know, but now you do. <laughs> all right, look, uh, very educational conversation, at least for yes. me. I got to yes. tell you. <laughs> yes, and send us a picture with that mask on that deer. Please, John, <laughs> thanks again for coming on. Congratulations. Cheers. And uh, anytime you want to come on, have uh, have your guys reach out to Nate. We love having you on, even if you just want to BS with us for a little bit. You're a great dude, and nothing but love and major success to you moving forward, all right? Thank you, guys, and I want to thank you, everybody that voted, and I, I'm honored to have this. Very sweet. Thanks, John. Well Good seeing you, buddy. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. See you uh, later. See ya.